Fidget spinners. They're catching on like wildfire across the country, and American Eye has noticed. But there's probably a few things we should look into carefully about these toys before there's no going back. From fidget-related injuries to expert testimonials, here are 10 things you must know about fidget spinners. Number 10. What the heck are they? Many well-respected media outlets have reported stories on fidget spinners, so it's about time American Eye does as well. Even after taking a close look at these things, it's hard to tell for sure exactly what they are. If someone hands you one of these things and you never heard of them before, you might think it's some type of ninja star or maybe some type of tool. But they're not. They're fidget spinners, and they're all the rage right now. Fidget spinners are taking over YouTube, and many people wonder what makes them so great for kids. What makes them great for kids is that their parents have no idea why anyone would like these things. It's kind of like listening to rap music. Some people think it's a miracle device that can somehow soothe people troubled from post-traumatic stress syndrome, autism, and even ADHD. These claims haven't been proven with any kind of scientific research, however, and parents are pushing to ban them from classrooms. These devices are normally 3D printed and consist of a bearing in the middle. With very little effort, the devices can spin at high speeds. Number 9. Banned from School Fidget spinners have been banned from some schools after people have inflicted bodily harm on each other. Those fidget spinners can move really fast and parent supervision while operating these devices is normally recommended. Although it's true kids can use just about anything to harm themselves with, playing with these things can be like playing with fire. Schools have mostly been banning these because they are a distraction. Many claim the contrary and believe that fidget spinners are useful for children with ADHD. However, if these things start spinning out of control, it could seriously put an eye out. Teachers find them distracting while trying to teach and just downright annoying. More and more people seem to be hypnotized by the spinning capabilities. Other kids with autism find the devices to be soothing and it gives people something to do with their hands. Even if they're not in the classrooms, the reckless students will attempt to pull crazy stunts with these things and tossing them back and forth. You can probably imagine if some blades were put on those things, it could get pretty dangerous. Number 8. Rise in Popularity an article in December of 2016 was published by Forbes magazine discussing how fidget spinners is a must-have in the office. This is a pretty well-respected magazine and when word got out about these, many people were scrambling to create them with a 3D printer or with whatever they could find. The toy is so popular that it's been on Amazon's top 20 bestsellers for most of 2017 on the toys and games section. Toy stores in the United States have never seen anything like this recently and there's never been enough supply to keep up with the demand. The fidget spinner search on Google rose exponentially in April of 2017 and toy companies are scrambling to manufacture these as quickly as possible. Can you believe that some of these actually cost $1,000? This one we see here was from Amazon.com and it contains over 200 pieces, is made of ceramic and aluminum that can actually spin for more than 3 minutes. The fidget spinner industry is certainly thriving and if you invested in fidget spinner parts in 2016, you could be a billionaire by now. Number 7. The Inventor is Broke you probably would imagine that whoever invented this thing is extremely rich right now and just rolling around in massive mountains of dough. The inventor originally came up with the idea in order to prevent kids with built up energy from acting violently and throwing rocks. The woman, Katherine Hedinger, who came up with the idea of the fidget spinner, is probably at home at this moment banging her head against the wall that she didn't keep her patent updated on this. She went to show Hasbro her product and they didn't see the magic in it that everyone currently does. She actually opened up a Kickstarter project in order to try to sell everyone her original idea of the fidget spinner, but Hasbro will certainly be profiting more from it than her. Number 6. Fidget Related Injuries So you thought fidget spinners were completely harmless, right? You thought spinning those things around all day was just a game? Well, think again. People keep on trying to come up with fidget related tricks to show their friends. They really shouldn't try to involve their face too much or something like this next case might happen. A boy in Australia severely injured his eyeball after he threw a fidget spinner and was trying to catch it. However, not everything went according to plan and this popular toy landed right in his eye. Doctors claim he was very lucky not to lose his eyesight in this eye. In another case, a little boy managed to get one of his fingers stuck in the fidget spinner. This photo we see here was of an x-ray scan from a young girl in Texas that even shows how the small parts of these toys can get lodged into people's throats. We don't know exactly how this happened 
happened or why a fidget spinner was so close to her mouth, but it happened nonetheless. You probably remember having some type of dangerous toy when you were a kid, and basically anything can be dangerous if you think about it, except for maybe Beanie Babies. Number 5. Fidget Physics Not all fidget spinners are created equally, and there's certainly some that can spin longer than others. But it actually all comes down to physics. You have to add things in like angular velocity, kinetic energy, the amount of force applied to the spin, as well as the smoothness of the bearing. Material of the fidget spinner can also come in handy, with some more expensive ones being made of high quality metallic materials. The reason it can balance so well is because it's basically a gyroscope. Each side needs to be precisely the same in order for gravity to pull equally on each part of the fidget spinner. The more equally balanced the spinner, the longer it will go and easier you can balance it. The spinner reaches which is a stable equilibrium of kinetic energy, as long as you don't move it too much, you should be able to balance it on your finger while it spins. Theoretically speaking, a fidget spinner could reach longer spin times in higher altitudes due to lower air pressure and also because of less gravitational pull. Gravity is basically the main factor in making it stop spinning. So it's possible this could also spin faster and longer near the equator as well. Any of our subscribers out there live in the Himalayas that have a fidget spinner? Try it out and let us know how it goes. Number 4. What the Experts Say The device was originally made to relieve people from stress, and many claim it relieves anxiety and all kinds of stuff, but what do psychological experts say about this? Will the hypnotizing whirling powers of the spinner somehow calm down someone's overactive mind? Many Americans are dealing with stress at unprecedented levels, and something simple like this not only could be an alternative to going on prescriptions, but would also be a miracle device, if it worked. But this is risky. It's difficult to say that it can simply cure all stress, ADHD, PTSD, and anxiety. This would lead to people with chemical imbalances in their brain trying to rely on a toy to keep them mentally stable. Parents should probably know that there's all kinds of well-documented and well-researched methods of treatment of such disorders, and going out and buying a toy might seem like a quick fix. But the truth is, there's really no scientific evidence to say that it'll work. It's important not to replace known treatment with this fad spinning device, as it can lead to the problem getting even worse in the future. Many ads online will claim that it will help you relieve all those things we mentioned earlier. But remember, this is a growing business, and they'll say what they need to to make a quick buck. Many teachers also think it has the complete opposite effect on kids with ADHD, and they get even more distracted in class by using it. Anyways, the bottom line of what experts are trying to say is that if you want to get your kid a fidget spinner, there's probably worse things out there that you can get them. But don't use it as a replacement to proper, well-documented therapies that are known to work. Number 3. Different Tricks With all that being said, keep taking your medications and try out some cool tricks with it. The ability for it to be able to spin at such high speeds for such long periods of time can allow for some cool scientific experiments. You might even be able to make a free power energy motor with a couple high power magnets. Since magnets naturally repel each other or attract each other, using this natural force and with enough effort, you could theoretically make it spin forever. This is still a theory in any case, but this type of magnetic repulsion has already been seen in trains and roller coasters. If you find a way to make this power an automobile or a flying saucer, you could potentially be the next Nikola Tesla. Other tricks for beginners include the simple hand toss, finger transfer, tossing it behind your back and catching it with your other hand, or you can try bouncing it off your little sister's face or your cat and having it land on one finger. Put some blades on this thing and you got yourself a helicopter rotor. So many things you can do. Just maybe invest in some protective eye gear and you should be fine. Number 2. Fidget Cubes so if fidget spinners aren't really cutting it for you, and you're not a big fan of spinning things around very much, also you can try out the fidget cubes we see here. This is another device for people who can't seem to keep their hands still and don't want to get caught in class fidgeting. As we all know, there's six sides to a cube and each side is different. You can flip switches, move a small joystick back and forth, and sites claim that there's even a side that's modeled after worry stones, which are ancient tools that were used to relieve anxiety. Basically, there's all kinds of things on this device that resemble a video game controller, and someone's out there hoping it will make a lot of money. There's actually a lot of people backing up this idea on Kickstarter at the moment, a total of 154,926 at the moment. The entrepreneur was only trying to get $15,000 to get the company going, but guess how much he actually made? That's right, $6.4 million. It kind of makes you wonder if using this thing too often will lead to bad fidgeting habits in the future when the cube isn't around. Can not people just flip their pencil around or chew on the eraser like they used to? No. And number one, when will the craze end? 
It's tough to know exactly how long these will be around for, but like most catchy products for kids, we imagine that the craze will be calming down within the next six months or whenever parents start thinking it's cool. But as you can tell from the fidget cube, many people around the world support this kind of thing and a lot of people are dealing with stress. This is giving people possibly some false hope that it might soothe their troubles from their experiences. This is possibly giving people some false hope that it might soothe the troubles that they're experiencing. If more experiments and studies come out to show that the fidget spinner can reduce levels of the stress chemical known as cortisol after extended periods of time of using the fidget spinner on a scale of possibly 50 to 100 people, this would help prove some of the validity of the claims. If there are positive results of the experiment, this thing could be around for quite some time. Hey guys, thanks for watching, and be sure to hit that subscribe button for new videos every day.